In this video, we'll go over some of the advanced brush settings for Artisan Sculpting Tools. First, we'll explore the toggle options at the bottom of the Brush Settings window, then we'll look at symmetry modeling. By default, Auto Smooth and Optimize Mesh are enabled, and I have Display Edges turned on as well. To demonstrate Auto Smooth, I'll use the Inflate Brush with a very high strength and drag along this mesh. Just after I release the mouse button, any sharp vertices are relaxed. Or if I click instead of drag, vertices are relaxed after clicking. With Auto Smooth disabled, vertices remain sharp. Next, let's look at Optimize Mesh. The Add slider for detail size is toggled on, which means I'll be adding finer edge detail to the mesh as I sculpt. With Optimize Mesh disabled, whether I drag or click, the resulting mesh is non-uniform with many thin triangles. Whereas Auto Smooth is implemented after a brush stroke or click, Optimize Mesh works dynamically. The mesh quality is improved as I go by flipping triangle edges where needed to produce a more uniform set of triangles. Note that while Optimize Mesh is enabled by default, turning it off can result in a faster refresh rate for high poly models. Moving on to Lock Boundary, a boundary edge is attached to only one face as opposed to an interior edge. With Lock Boundary disabled, all edges can move as I sculpt, including boundary edges. When lock boundary is enabled, those edges remain in place. A common use for lock boundary is in the case of adjacent patches of terrain in which each patch is its own group. With lock boundary disabled, if I edit the center group and sculpt around the edges, the seams between adjacent terrain groups can break. Turning on lock boundary keeps those seams in place. Lock boundary also comes in handy for preventing deformation around specific features in the terrain. In this example, I have a building footprint directly above the terrain, and I'll use the Sandbox Stamp tool with an offset to place the building on top of the terrain. Now, with the building itself made into one group, and the surrounding terrain made into a separate group, I can open the terrain group for editing, where there are boundary edges along the outer border and around the building. As long as lock boundary is enabled, any sculpting I do won't move those boundary edges. So, with the sculpt brush, I can tap the control key and sculpt inward to create a moat, then sculpt outward around the property perimeter. For one more lock boundary example, let's say I want to work on an isolated section of this subdivided and smoothed box. I'll use the select brush to select or mask the area I want and right-click on a selected face and choose Make Group and Edit. The group is open, Lock Boundary is on, and I'll use the Sculpt brush, tapping Control to push inward, and push in the group's vertices without changing the masked area boundary. To pull a smaller section back out, I'll use Select Brush again to select a smaller area, Make Group and Edit, and use the Inflate brush to bulge these vertices back out. This mask and group technique is especially useful in a very high poly model because the refresh rate is higher when sculpting within a group as compared to refreshing the entire mesh. Now I have a group within a group and I can activate the select tool and close groups one by one to finish. If I now want to work on the entire mesh and not just the isolated sections, I can explode each group and now using a tool such as smooth brush will affect all vertices. With SketchUp's native shading, it's often difficult to judge depth and see detail. This is especially true when Display Edges is disabled, the mesh appears as bright white and washed out. This view is based on the default settings in the Shadows window. Turning on Sculpt Shading presents a clearer view. This mode uses optimized shadow settings and sunlight direction that dynamically adjusts as I orbit around, making it easier to judge depth and see detail. Turning on Sculpt Shading automatically disables both Display Edges and Smooth Normals. With Smoothing Off, it's easier to view triangulation and judge mesh smoothness. And Disabled Edges make for a faster refresh rate, but I can turn either option back on. As we've seen, the Smooth Normals toggle switches between smooth and faceted shading. This difference is easiest to see when edges are turned off, and even easier to see in Sculpt Shading mode. 
Smooth normals affects only the current active faces. In this example, the smooth non-faceted faces are part of a group. To unsmooth normals here, I have to open the group and disable the smooth setting. After I close the group, when I turn on smooth normals, the group is unaffected and still shows faceting. Display edges, on the other hand, toggles the display of all edges and profiles throughout the entire model by changing the edge settings in the Styles window. When disabled, all edges are hidden, including soft and smooth edges, even if hidden geometry is displayed. As mentioned earlier, disabling edge display improves refresh rate while also providing a clearer view of the model. Our last feature is Symmetry. In this example, I'll start with a cube located away from the origin, which I'll select and rotate, then subdivide and smooth. When I activate a brush and click the Symmetry button at the top of the Brush Settings window, I get a message that a new component will be created along the red axis with symmetry relative to the green-blue plane. Clicking Yes makes the original geometry a component, adds a mirrored component along the red axis, and now any sculpting I do will be mirrored. At the top left, I can see that the symmetry lock is active. And because these are components, I can work on either one for mirrored results. If I want to use symmetry within a different axis framework, I can start with a component. Here's a cube, as before, which I'll make into a component, move and rotate, then edit the component and subdivide and smooth. The component has its own set of axes, which are different from the model axes. The component axes follow the orientation of the cube, and if I were to sculpt in symmetry mode now, I would see the same mirrored components as before, relative this time to the component axes. To sculpt with symmetry within the sphere itself, I'll start the same way, with a cube component, moved and rotated, and subdivided and smoothed. This time, I'll right-click on the closed component and choose Change Axes. To keep the new axes out of the way, I'll hover on a vertex along the center, move straight down, and triple-click to keep the same axis orientation in all directions. Now, when I open the component and sculpt symmetrically, I have two mirrored half-sphere subcomponents. Any vertices I move along the green-blue plane remain in that plane to prevent seam ripping. This is always the case in symmetry mode, even if lock boundary is off. To continue modeling without symmetry, I first need to close the half-sphere subcomponent, then select both mirrored subcomponents and explode them. The main component is still open for editing, there is no symmetry lock, and I can continue sculpting.